Yom HaZikaron, Israel's Memorial Day, isn't just about remembering soldiers. It's about remembering the victims of terror that have fallen as they live their everyday life here in the land of Israel. Every Jew that's chosen to make Aliyah has chosen to be a hero, to put his life on the line, to put his family's life on the line, taking buses, going to school, going to sleep at night Friday nights. Everyone puts themselves at risk. And tonight we remember those who've made that choice, who lived here in the land of Israel and fell by the hands of murderers. On March 6, 2008, Israel was devastated. At 8.36 p.m., a lone gunman came into the Merkaz Arav High School, Yeshiva Litzirim, and opened fire on a group of teenage students that were studying late at night. These weren't just regular students. These were the best of the best, Israel's brightest. Other students had taken time off 8.36 p.m., 14, 15-year-old boys. These were the ones that chose to stay extra, continue learning, push the envelope a little bit farther, dedicate a little bit more time to their Torah studies. A gunman came in and shot them in the back as they were studying over their holy books. Israel was devastated. The Hamas praised the event. 84% of the Palestinians supported the terror attack, and Israel was left shocked. These weren't army soldiers. These weren't trained military men. These were children studying in high school, defenseless, alone. Only the courage of older people that happened to be there that had a military background, but living as civilians at that time, stopped the disaster. Eight children, beautiful, bright souls, were taken from us that night. Eleven were wounded, five in critical condition. Until today, it's known as the Merkaz Harav Massacre. Tonight, we're honored and we're privileged to have on a very special and inspiring very brave Jewish soul, a woman whose writings and whose words has brought tears to my eyes on numerous occasions over the past few days. She's the mother of one of these eight extraordinarily beautiful souls who were taken from us at the Merkaz Harav massacre. I, I was reading this book, and I would suggest all of you read it because it really changed my life. It's called Princes Among Men. And it's about these eight extraordinary Jewish boys who define for me what a goal and an aspiration is in life. In a lot of ways, reading this book has strengthened my faith, not only in Hashem, not only in God, but in myself, in the potential that we all have. Because I've heard the stories, sometimes they seem to me like legends of some of our sages like Hillel, of Beit Hillel, the great Rabbi Hillel, who so wanted to learn Torah, but he didn't have the tuition, so he climbed up onto the roof of the yeshiva and put his ear on a cold winter night to the skylight so he could hear the words, and he nearly froze to death. He so badly wanted to learn Torah. Or Rabbi Akiva, who went from being an ignoramus to one of the greatest rabbanim, one of the greatest sages of all time. But somehow I always thought, you know, that was then and this is now until I read this book, until I was able to in some way get acquainted with the stellar character and attributes that these young men had, and one that stands out, that we're so fortunate to have his mother with us here tonight was, was Avram David. He was unique. In some ways in my mind, I will always think, what would he have done? What would be the right thing to do? What would he have done? He was zealous in guarding his lips from ever speaking a trace of gossip or slander of Lashon Hara. The fullness of his heart with which he obeyed and honored his parents was an example to everyone. Even it shocked his parents at times. 
his love for learning Torah. His friends would watch as he would learn Torah and learn about what true devotion is. Every moment was consumed with learning. This is a young boy. His prayer, his davening would always take longer. And people would sit there and watch him and just learn what it is to be a soul cleaving to one's maker, how to daven, how to pray. He was an extraordinary person and only an extraordinary mother could bring up a soul of this nature and she lost her son and despite that, she has as well brought light from such darkness. So please join me in welcoming Rivka Moria. Tonight, uh, Yom Azikaron, we're here remembering Avram David and so many, I mean, that Merkaz Harav attack was a trauma for the nation, for so many in this room, we think about it regularly. And we learned about who Avram David was through the newspaper and through stories, but as, as his mother, if you could share with us a little bit about who he was. Okay, he, uh, he was a very, very bright and curious child, very sensitive. From the moment he learned to read, he was an avid reader and a good student. He also loved sports. He bicycled and hiked and swam and did Taekwondo. And when he got the opportunity, he horseback ride it, if that's, rode horseback. And he, uh, around his bar mitzvah, he became very, very serious about his Torah studies and stopped reading even uh, regular storybooks that most kids read. Um, I sometimes mark it by that time between when the, Harry, the fifth Harry Potter book came out and the sixth Harry Potter book came out, was some time in there he stopped reading. He read the first five and didn't even bother. That's a tough place to them. quit. So, because he, he just wanted to be, uh, immerse himself both in his work on <coughs> his uh, studies and also on his character. And in ninth grade, he went to Yeshivat Yerushalayim Litzirim, which is the, the Merkaz of Rav High School. It's right next door. And he really, like I heard in the introduction, he really dedicated himself to Torah, to Masim Tovim, to good deeds, and also working on his character, and also on his praying. And we heard many stories about his scholarship, among them, he, his desire to, and his determination to learn as much as possible by heart. Like whatever he was learning in the Gemara and the Tosfot and Rashi, he would learn by heart in order to be able to do repetition on it when, during what might have otherwise been downtime. And in thinking about him the past few days and thinking about uh, the... The soul, I think, is very close during, uh, during uh, important times, important memorials. And so I've been thinking about him a lot as Yom HaZikron has been coming up. And I've been thinking about the bracha, the blessing that we say in the morning, Asher Kirishanu B'mitzvotav Yitzivanu La'asok B'divoy Torah. Hashem has commanded us to be involved in learning Torah. Like, he was constantly immersed. involved and immersed in learning Torah. And then it goes on to say, Revna, and make sweet in our mouths the word of Torah. And although he was very serious, he, was, he had a lot of satisfaction and sweetness in learning Torah. And he really was, his, he exemplified that blessing. He made that blessing come alive. You know, I, I think about what I was doing when I was 14. And I think about how you describe your son. How did you, what happened? Was this just a unique soul? Was it someone that was just so beyond, so different, so special? The, I mean, he was a regular human being. My second son, God bless him, he, he said, I remember when he used to kick me. And, <laughs> you know, he was a regular kid, but I think that, that's part of what was so special about him, was that even though he was regular, he decided that he wanted to be involved in Torah. He wanted to listen to what um, 
what the Bible, what the sages teach us, and just do it, and love doing it. And he, he, in a way, showed us that we could maybe all do at least a little bit more of that. Wow. So after the attack, tell us what happened. What happened immediately afterwards? What was the response? How did the country respond? What was your life like? Well, the, the response was astonishing. It was, I think, in one way, everyone was in shock, but in another way, everyone was just looking for a way to help. I, I was so immersed in my own shock and my loss that it was hard for me to understand how this was different than other attacks, but I saw that it was. I saw that there was a whole minibus from the Golan Heights that filled up and with high school students and they went to every single of the Shiva houses in order to, they didn't, none of them knew anyone who had been killed and yet they, they wanted to take part in the burden and the, the Rosh Yeshiva and the rest of the staff of the Yeshiva helped us incredibly. The fact that we were also families with similar, similar outlooks and similar, um, similar lifestyles and we had a similar Torah as well and coming together really helped and, and thank God I live in a wonderful community which gave a lot of help and I was really lucky that, that my mother and my sister who even though they're not Jewish they understood the situation well enough to, to come here and give their love to me and my surviving children and just to be there for us. Wow. You know, you're known for your connection to the Merkazarov High School, baking cakes for Shavuot and being so connected and involved still, but you would imagine that that would be the last place you would want to step foot, the memories and the horror. There was a time where there were still bullet holes all over uh, the Beit Midrash. What keeps you so connected to that yeshiva when most people would want to stay away from that place? Well, everyone has their own path in grief, um, but I, in my own path of grief, I really needed that connection. Yeshlatz, Yeshivat Yerushalayim Litzirim, is a place that Avram David loved, and they loved him there. And a very strong love makes a Roshim makes an impression and and I could still feel it there I could still experience it in some way by being there in the building by connecting with the people so that's one reason why it was important for me and another reason why it was so important for me is that this as as you said in the introduction the the terrorist was taken down by somebody who just happened to be there and there are a lot of different ways that the attack could have been even worse and every single one of the the high school students experienced painfully the attack whether he was attacked himself or just through the whole loss and I felt like I wanted to connect with these boys and give something back to them and also to show my gratitude to Hashem that they were still with us, that at least they were still there. And since the sages teach us that in Kemach, in Torah, if there's no bread, there can't be Torah learning. And there's so much Torah already at Yashlatz, I thought maybe I can be involved a little bit in the bread in the physical side. That's beautiful. As you've been in Israel a long time now and you've participated in, in Yom HaZikaron, but since the tragedy of your son's murder, how has Yom HaZikaron itself tonight, how has this changed for you? What does it mean now? It's always been meaningful for me and I would always try and light a candle do something and you know even the the little stickers that the children in in nursery school get I would try and get one of those and wear it and of course now it's so much deeper and so much more personal but ironically the challenge is to not just think of my son but to try and be inclusive of the thousands who who gave their lives for us to be here 
And another aspect that I try and think of on Yom Hazikaron is a group that, thank God, wasn't killed, but who were injured either in the Israel Defense Forces or in in uh, terror attacks. And and there, I don't know of a day in which they're formally formally um, honored. And so that's an aspect I bring also to Yom Hazikaron. Well, what do you think Aram David would want to say if he were here today to the audience? What would his message be? It's so hard for me to imagine him in front of an audience because his gaze would, is, was almost always like either to a page or in tefillah. And, and I think that... It, it's very hard for me to try and uh, I, I know that there was a survey taken in his, in his grade shortly before the pigua and it was done without signing the names but you know after he had after he was killed you know everyone of course was able to figure out what his handwriting was and one of the questions was how many rabbis will come out of this class and he said as many as possible and I think that message is important that idea that try and be all that you can be because you really can be if you if you push yourself and you believe in yourself learning about him definitely inspired me I have to tell you and your words were very inspiring as well uh, you your message what would you want to share with this audience not only here, but around the world who are watching this program. Okay. Something that's uh, struck me many times is while thinking about all the different wonderful things that could be said about Avram David is, well, I only loved him because I'm his mom and, you know, and he was my son. And the, the value of that relationship, it, it's, his deeds were secondary to how much I love him. And Thinking about Yom Zikaron and coming together, it's very intense because we want to be together, and yet the nation of Israel, Israelis, Jews, we have so many differences, and sometimes it's easy to say, well, I love all Jews, but, you know, except this group, you know, or this group. And I really feel that if, if we could only, and myself included, think more about the value of the relationship. God created an incredible relationship among the Jewish people and among the Bnei Israel, the children of Israel. And if we can be aware of that and realize that everybody's differences of opinion are really secondary when it comes to loving each other. Um, maybe we want to have a good argument with them later, but the love itself is associated with the value of the relationship. And if we could get a little bit farther in that, maybe that would even help us get closer to peace. Well, wow. thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Never in the history of the world has a nation suffered like the Jewish people. And the question that bothers everyone is why? Why have we been chosen to suffer all the pain and anguish and casualties? My first rabbi, Rabbi David Zeller of blessed memory, taught me. He said that only a nation with a broken heart can feel the pain of other nations. One day, Israel will lead the world to a new era, to a time of peace, prosperity, an end of disease, environmental consciousness, social consciousness. Israel will lead us to a time where the whole world recognizes the oneness of God. Only a people that have been oppressed can feel the pain of other nations under the burden of oppression. Only a nation that's brokenhearted with casualties of war will fight to end the bloodshed. Every Jew in this room is a hero. Israel was chosen to be that leader that ushers the world into that new era. And every Jew in the room tonight has chosen to live that role, to be that leader in their everyday life. Tonight we remember 
all of the holy saints of Israel that died on the front lines of Jewish destiny, the heroes of Israel, both in uniform and out. Tonight, we stand united as one nation with one heart. Shalom from Jerusalem.